Hi, I am Rick Bonney, Director Emeritus of the Public Engagement and Science Program at the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. This presentation is part of a 10-module training program on developing and implementing citizen science projects for which scientists collaborate with members of the public to address real-world problems. The goal for this program is to introduce fundamental concepts of citizen science in U.S. federal land management agencies, which often use citizen science to manage resources and to engage the public in agency missions. This program was developed by several partners, including staff from the U.S. Forest Service, the National Park Service, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the Bureau of Land Management, and Skudik Institute at Acadia National Park. This is the ninth module in our 10-module series. Module 8 discussed recruiting, training, and engaging project participants once your project is developed. This presentation is on sharing project results with participants, stakeholders, and the wider world for achieving scientific and resource management objectives for parks, forests, grasslands, refuges, or similar lands and waters. It fits within our 10-part series here. Three takeaways for this module are first, Sharing data and results with participants provides them with a sense of achievement and lets them know that they are valued. Second, results can be provided as raw data, data summaries, data reports, and publications. And third, results can be disseminated via email, newsletters, web pages, and social media. This module focuses on sharing data and results in multiple formats, ranging from emails sent to project participants to detailed data reports aimed at decision and policymakers. Of course, many project participants also will be interested in detailed reports, and many policymakers will appreciate data summaries. For most projects, rapid feedback about project data and results will be appreciated by all interested audiences. One of the most effective ways to thank volunteers for their help in generating the information is to share it with them on a regular basis. If they believe that their data are important and useful, they will feel a sense of achievement and be encouraged to stay engaged in the project. For projects with online data submission, providing real-time results is an extremely effective way to show that data have been received and are being incorporated into the project database. Many online citizen science platforms such as iNaturalist, Nature's Notebook, and SitSci.org prepare data summaries automatically and their built-in data summaries offer instant rewards to participants. For example, the Rio Grande Phenology Trail conducts weekly phenology monitoring on a suite of focal species, including the Rio Grande Cottonwood and Siberian Elm on the Valle de Oro National Wildlife Refuge. Project data are intended to inform refuge management decisions concerning ecological restoration goals. Because the project was built using Nature's Notebook, it can use that platform's visualization tool, and participants can easily view project data. An example of a project built on the SitSci.org platform is Utah Water Watch. SitSci.org allows visitors to view individual observations by clicking on an interactive Google map that shows details including time, date, and location coordinates, as well as photos and all observational data. In addition, participants can create graphs by choosing location, type of data, numerical or categorical, and type of numerical measurements. The project website also includes a watershed interpretation page that explains how to explore water quality in the individual's watershed using Utah Water Watch data. Some projects have built their own data collection and display tools. For instance, the Coastal Observation and Seabird Survey Team, or COAST, has its own app that allows participants to view interactive presentations of COAST data. This includes graphs showing regional differences in beached birds, trends in time, species composition, and much more. For community-based projects or projects that do not have online data management capabilities, Participants and other stakeholders will have to wait until you are able to summarize findings for distribution. Once prepared, these can be disseminated on a project website or via email, newsletters, or various social media. And even projects that do have online data visualization often provide various types of summaries. Coast, for example, has a monthly newsletter, a blog, 
and links to news articles and documentaries featuring Coast data. When preparing summaries and visualizations, present your results in a manner that shows their relevance to the participants. Translate your results into plain language and use graphs, tables, charts, and other visualization techniques to help participants understand the information. Usually, simpler is better to illustrate project findings. Plain language and clear, concise visualizations and explanations are interpreted faster and are better at getting people's attention no matter their level of expertise. Some projects, such as the National Phenology Network, prepare extremely short annual reports that include pages that can be repurposed as standalone graphics for sharing on social media. Indeed, social media has opened up many new opportunities for building and promoting projects, communicating with participants, and providing project results. Advantages of social media include rapid dissemination of information and the opportunity for project participants to interact and form an online community, which can bring cohesion to a project. However, social media must be employed carefully because most social media platforms are not particularly controllable and can sometimes be hijacked, either through misinformed comments or when information is shared out of context. When feasible, face-to-face -face presentations and question-and-answer sessions are a wonderful way to provide results to participants. These are most doable for community-based projects. Incorporating social events is a good practice, as is inviting participants to make their own presentations about their findings and experiences. When providing project summaries, remember to circle back to your project goals and objectives. If you have recruited participants to gather data to address a specific issue, they will want to know that the issue is being addressed using the data. And if it is not, how come? For example, a project focused on measuring stream quality may document a problem that is beyond the scope of the project organizers to influence. Issues surrounding use of data can be avoided by starting out with realistic expectations. Also, project results may lead to actions that some participants may not agree with, such as eradication of a beautiful but unfortunately noxious invasive species. Again, considering participant expectations from the outset of a project is critically important. Citizen science is only one of many threads of information used when making management decisions. Sometimes a decision may not align precisely with the science, but the science still may inform how a decision is implemented. Reporting project findings also should help participants understand how the results apply to them. For this reason, you need to understand the interests and motivations of your participants. Then you can share results and their meaning in ways that make sense to the participants and are relevant to what they want or need to know. Remember also to report your data summaries to other agency staff. In addition to data summaries, many projects make full project data available. Typically, this is good practice. While data openness and transparency require investments in infrastructure and time, Data sharing can be critical in allowing others to examine the information and can build community trust, ongoing participation, and sometimes even unique insights or actions that you may not have considered. Remember, though, that some data are sensitive because of where they were collected or because the species on which they focus are threatened or endangered. Additionally, data sensitivity may vary among communities, such as information that pertains to a tribe's ancestral or sacred lands or to an area that is subject to commercial activity. Before releasing data, consider any intellectual property rights and protection requirements to which your data may be subject. In addition, ask yourself what the outcomes might be if volunteers forwarded these data to 100 people or posted them to social media. If you do plan to make your data available for public use, be sure that you do so in accordance with your agency's legal and policy requirements and in a manner consistent with any agreements from financial supporters for open data and open access. Request or require that participants share original images under an unrestrictive license, such as CC BY, that permits redistribution. If necessary, restrict access to certain information and be sure to know your organization's standard review, approval, and release policies. You can make your data available via download, 
either as compressed packages of pre-selected documented data or as CSV files for custom query results. Make sure that data recipients can access complete metadata and other documentation so that they can evaluate, replicate, and make the best possible use of your results. Identify the sources, license, methods, and contents of the data. An example of a data terms of use policy is available from Nature's Notebook. Acknowledging the participants who collect the data is usually a good idea. Most agencies have an approval process that data must go through to become open data. Make sure that you consider those requirements when designing your project and ensure that you are collecting appropriate metadata. Such requirements may be less restrictive when project partners host data. One citizen science platform that provides raw data is eBird. Many refuges, parks, and other public lands use eBird to keep track of the birds in their area, and several focus projects have been built on the eBird platform. Anyone can request to download raw eBird data, or at least those data that are not deemed sensitive, by filling out a simple request form. This form allows project staff at the Cornell Lab of Ornithology to keep track of data downloads for analyses of how the data are being used. As a result of the open data policy, eBird data have been used in hundreds of publications. Beyond providing data summaries and raw data when appropriate, you'll want to report full project results that discuss how the data can be used to further land management or science. You can do this through written project reports, technical guides, peer-reviewed publications, presentations at conferences, public webinars, or by using technologies such as Esri Story Maps. In some cases, your stakeholders will require that results be submitted in a certain format. For example, documents submitted for court proceedings. Take time to research any formatting requirements for your data. Importantly, when in doubt, seek outside advice and guidance. Sometimes data will have implications for species management, habitat restoration, or game harvest. Such data will be valuable for holding an agency accountable for its actions. However, they also could be used in unanticipated or potentially inappropriate ways. Any report must be clear about its intent and should point out any limitations in the data or data analyses. When putting together a report, don't forget about content repurposing. If you already have taken the time to put together data summaries, graphics, or related content, use the same information as the starting place for your report or paper. Project Tanager is an example of a project for which staff prepared multiple reports and papers about project results. They began by publishing the Land Manager's Guide to Improving Habitat for Scarlet Tanagers and Other Forest Interior Birds. This detailed report included information about minimum forest patches required to support successful breeding of tanagers in different regions across the United States. For example, in the northern forest region, in an area with only 10% forest in a 2,500-acre block, a block of at least 117 acres is required to provide habitat of moderate suitability for tanagers. But in an area with 70% forest in a 2,500-acre block, providing habitat of moderate suitability can be accomplished with a block of only 21 acres. In addition, project staff published a series of papers about project results. One is Effects of Forest Fragmentation on Breeding Tanagers in the journal Conservation Biology. This paper not only provided detailed project reports, but also helped to establish the legitimacy of citizen science as a research tool. More recent publications of results from citizen science projects with agency connections include one from the Saguaro Census Project, The Interaction of Drought and Habitat Explains Space-Time Patterns of Establishment in Saguaro, which was published in the journal Ecology, and one from Coast, Using Beached Bird Data to Assess Seabird Oiling Susceptibility, published in the Marine Pollution Bulletin. Beyond your participants, fellow staff, and other stakeholders, you might have findings worth sharing with the outside world. At the local level, this might involve providing a talk about project results to local organizations such as the Rotary Club, Chamber of Commerce, or Youth Group. The presentation and delivery would, of course, need to be tailored to the specific audience. 
For example, the Desert Tortoise Program shares information in a few ways. When park visitors add tortoise sightings to a data book in the visitor center, park staff members look at Google Maps with the visitor to determine exactly where the animal was sighted. Project staff also share information with a local friends group and with local tribes about where species are found on their lands. In some cases, local sharing might be the entirety of the results sharing, especially if the project is focused on collecting data to address a local concern. Focusing on a larger audience generally requires working with the media. Regardless of audience proximity, when preparing results for public consumption, you'll need to make them relevant to the audience by explaining results in a way that will capture the interest and imagination of readers and viewers. Data visualizations and maps are particularly powerful in this regard, as long as the intended audience can readily interpret and understand the visualizations. For example, the Saguaro Census regularly provides updates through its social media pages, especially on Facebook and Instagram, and some of their Instagram posts have reached more than 50,000 people. They also developed a range of interpretive products, ranging from brochures to refrigerator magnets to recruitment posters. They give community talks and school pre-visits, as well as presentations to interpreters. As a result, they have received significant media attention, with two front-page articles in the Arizona Daily Star and an episode on local public television's Arizona Illustrated. The census also is featured in an article on saguaros and climate change in the Washington Post. Whether stories are picked up by journalists depends on the journalist's perception of the potential interest in the story and may depend on circumstances outside of your control. For example, other items that are dominating the news. Regional press will be most interested in local stories, what your results mean for local communities. Consider developing a relationship with journalists. Is there a local or national reporter who covers topics in line with your citizen science program? Make contact with them early in project development and show them that you are a reliable contact and source of information. When you have results, pitch them ideas for covering your project that are in line with their interests. For example, I know that you are interested in X because I saw your story X, and I think that you might be interested in our program X. If they feature your program once, they may be inclined to do so again, so send them short updates when you have relevant news or exciting results. They might not always bite, but they will appreciate that you offered them the scoop. When developing news or press releases about your project, try to provide a human element. Feature a participant to make the story more personal. Link your program to something going on in local or national news, and look at the kinds of stories that journalists have published in the past and find a connection to your work. Plan content for holidays and events, such as Pollinator Week. Include that context when you make your pitch and pitch in advance. A journalist may need time to re-pitch the idea to an editor, and very close to a popular holiday, a publication may already have a related story lined up. Also consider identifying media-ready participants. Journalists often love talking with volunteers and data users to give their story a strong human component. If you get permission ahead of time from your participants, you can quickly put the journalist in touch with them for an interview or quote. Don't forget to let your participants know when the article is published and thank them for their efforts to represent your project. Seeking advice from an agency communications office is an excellent approach to making your results more broadly known. Communications experts in your agency can help put together a media kit to make certain items immediately available, such as names, titles, affiliations of key contacts, logos, and images. If photos include people, make sure that you have media releases and proper permission. Thank you for joining me today. The goal of this presentation has been to discuss sharing project results with participants, stakeholders, and the wider world. We hope that you'll take away three ideas. First, sharing data and results with participants provides them with a sense of achievement and lets them know that they are valued. Second, that results can be provided as raw data, data summaries, data reports, and publications. And third, that results can be disseminated via email newsletters, web pages, and social media.
Module 10 will explore the process of determining the successes of your project as well as ways that it can be improved. The accompanying Citizen Science Toolkit includes resources to further guide your citizen science efforts. Have a great day.